Okay, so a couple of questions have come up about um, what we're doing for the topographic scheme. Um, so the file that you would use for the topographic scheme, as you can see, is infinitely thin. There are no base and sides on it. So this is what um, a typically we would use um, for a digital sculpt uh, situation. So it is also a, um, it's also a, an editable mesh. So if I come across here to my modifier panel, what I'll get is access to my tools up here. Um, at the moment, it's got a UVW map on it. Um, I'd need to be down in my edit poly, um, in my edit poly uh, level of the stack so that I can get to my brushes. All right, so the first brush that we tend to look at, and what I might do is, because that UV, UVW map is sort of showing up uh, strangely, is I'll just show my end result toggle so that we don't get the, um, the material on the, on the grass. All right, so I have um, an editable poly and I have um, brush tools that are along the top. And these are, these used to be known as the graphite modeling tools. But we also have tools at the bottom here of the modifier stack called the paint deformation tools. Now the primary difference really being that our paint deformation tools, if I use, let's say vertex level and I select one of them and I turn on my soft select, you'll see that um, I can make my paint deformations only work within the soft select area. So if I were to do a push-pull here now and in my Z, so um, pulling it to my Z direction, uh, control shift will make my brush smaller. Um, I can now deform and you'll see that once it gets to dark blue polygons, uh, dark blue vertices, I'm not going to get any deformation. So I don't have to commit to that at all. I can cancel that just by saying cancel. Um, but if I did commit to it and then I did brush push pull over the top, you would see that it would take the previous deformation as its start point. So I'm cancelling down there. And I think one other thing that's really useful to understand is that within here we can brush on our soft select. So we can paint on a selection of vertices. So that's our, that's our selection of vertices. And then within there, we could come down to our paint push pull and just work within, within that selection of vertices. Now, I think it's really useful to know that the um, control shift makes my brush radius smaller. So if I wanted to do more detailed work, but my alt shift will make my strength up, you know, bigger or smaller. Strength is a funny one because it is really, um, it's really the speed. So if it is up at its maximum, you'll see very quickly, I get very tall mountainous looking things. If I bring that brush strength right down to sort of 0.1, three it'll very slowly build up so I have to hold down my left mouse button and drag over the areas a lot if I want to get deformations in there so it's a sort of a matter of practice and pushing and pulling within this brush you can do some things with your brush options they're not great but if you open this graph 
you can activate this um, bezier curve and you can make them a bit more pinchy but that's about it so if I now bring my brush strength up to one you might see that I am getting a slightly pointier looking uh, it's not a very good example but I'm getting slightly pointier looking hills rather than rounded hills this won't go back to its previous state so you, if you want nice normal kind of looking mounds you would need to bring that bezier back into position um, so it's like a it's a, a, a graph controller all right so let's assume that I dislike all of that I can press cancel and that will come down now there is this bunch of tools at the top here which is known as the edit poly ribbon and it is different same same but different let's say so paint deform is not the same as paint deformation over here but we'll have a look at it so within paint deform we have the push pull brush and if we activate that you'll see we get this and yours won't be on the um, on your ribbon. I've um, I've docked mine to the ribbon by just hovering over this side, and I've said return panels to ribbon. Um, and I'm just going to pull this off to the side as well. So in this one, it's a little different because the lock to selection is slightly different. Um, I think we can lock to selection, but let me just see if I can find it. So the first thing we want to do whenever we're doing transforms, particularly at the start, is we want to make sure our transforms are happening in the Z. We then can kind of, if I were to drag my brush over here and it's the same, control shift will bring my brush size down or up, alt shift will bring my strength up or down. It's not going to lock to this selection of vertices, it's gonna affect the entire object. Um, so that's an interesting aspect um, we can probably get to our brush options. No, we may be able to get to a, a selection locking, um, but I'll have a look at that in a minute. So let's say I like or dislike this. I could come across and go commit in this circumstance, or I could cancel in this circumstance. Within the push-pull deformations, we also have um, a couple of other brushes. So if I do have an area of hills, I can relax and soften, which will bring those down. I can flatten, so a selection of vertices, it'll start sort of flattening. It'll take the, um, it'll take the average of areas and flatten those down. Pinch and spread is not particularly useful for us because it deforms the mesh in an X and Y um, in an X and Y um, plane. And for us, unless we're going, we're sort of very comp we understand very much what we're doing by pinching that together. Um, it's not worth playing with to start with. And smudge is the same. Noise, on the other hand, is an interesting one because it gives us more of these brush options. So over here I can, well, one of the things I can do is cap the offset, transform still in the Z, but we have scale and turbulence of noise. So if I brush on some noise, you can see it gets kind of, you know, hilly. If I change my, um, blah, 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 let's see, if I change my turbulence, just gets to be a bigger scale and scale, well, I could bring that right up. 
and you'll get something quite different. So that is kind of fun. We can lock things, we can constrain to line. Um, for that we need to draw a line on, on this surface. So I might just go back into my edit poly so that nothing is, um, no vertices are highlighted. And if I come across here to my spline, and if I draw a spline on this side, spline, that's it turning up there, if I can see in my F3, it's not super clear. But if I select this spline, ah, that is not on my surface. Because we need to set the surface as the thing that we're going to be drawing on. My apologies. So back down at the editable poly, if we come into our selection, come into our freeform, we need to be drawing on a surface. Right, so if we now draw our spline, use the pick button, pick this surface, and if we draw our spline now, it'll be drawn on our surface. I better just make sure that is the case. Yes, so the green ones, as you can see on the, on the ground, this spline is actually drawn on the surface. Great, so if we want to constrain our paint deformations, we need to find our constraint. We can pick, designate a spline object to use with constraint to spline. So we need to pick this spline. And then if we come across to our selection, no, public paint. No, where is our, what we need is our constraints. So, um, hmm. One moment. 